Why is this not filmed better? Why? <laughs> the Man with the Golden Gun for me has always been a film I just wish was better than when I finally saw it. I remember as a kid going to a family member, they had the video of it, and it was this picture of Roger Moore hiding in fear of this person, this man the gone gun. And it got my mind just imagining, what, what sort of villain is this where Bond is this scared of this villain. It just got me obsessed with finally watching this film, The Man with the Golden Gun. And then finally I got it on DVD, and I've got to be honest, it was a disappointment. Now, the film has its good points, but for me overall, this film went so campy it's a bit unreal. There was the whole thing about the Solex agitator. Yes, I know about the energy crisis at the time of this film, but it just doesn't feel right in this. I just, I really wish that Man of the Golden Gun was one of those all-time great Bond films. And to be honest, I think it potentially could have been. In the past, I've done other of these redo, reboots, and remake videos with like Quantum of Solace and Die Another Day, but this one is a real special one to me. Because I'm gonna do now today what I think will be a better film version of The Man with the Golden Gun. And I'm taking you all for the ride with me. Now, the rules of this remake, reboot, reimagined is very simple. It must either take some elements from the book that weren't in the film, I can use that and incorporate into the film, but apart from that, it must still stay true to the film. Things that happen in the film or location still must happen in this remake, reboot, because if I change it completely, it's just not fair. So these are the rules when it comes to this remake and reboot. And on that other note, if you haven't already, why not consider liking and subscribing to the channel? We're trying to reach a thousand followers before the end of the year, so it'd be really great if you could help out with that. And don't forget as well also to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. But without ado, here is my version, or the better version, if you will, of the film, The Man with the Golden Gun. So the film's pre-title sequence very much remains the same. I do love being on Scaramanga's Island. I love the introduction of the Fun House, the introduction of Scaramanga. That's all great. As far as I'm concerned, that can absolutely stay in the film. The big difference I'll have here right now is respectfully to Lulu. She's a great singer, but the Man with the Golden Gun song as well... Yeah, it wasn't really great. There was an alternate version with Alice Cooper doing a version, which I think fits the film a lot better. So this is my opinion, pre-title as it is, and then into this. carries on as normal where we have the M briefing scene and agrees that Bond's new mission is to eliminate Scaramanga once and for all. I would like to say at this point there is no mention in my film version about energy crisis, Serlex agitator. I want to keep this film very much focused on if you will the jewel and the world is if you will the uh, canvas. It's Bond versus Scaramanga and that is the main theme of this film. Bond then goes into Investigate 009's death where we have the fight scene and the belly dancers dressing room. Ah, I've lost my charm. Not from where I'm standing. And we then follow on to find the bullet was made by Lazar, then we go on to meet Lazar. Mr. Bond, bullets do not kill. It is the finger that pulls the trigger. Exactly. I'm now aiming precisely at your groin. So speak or forever hold your peace. So in my version of the Lazar scene, it actually ends with Lazar trying to escape and run away from Bond out of fear of Francisco Scaramanga. Bond does take a bit of a suit, but he decides just to leave him and goes back to his workshop where he does find a clue about how the bullets are being shipped. Bond's clue leads him to Hong Kong. There we run into Scaramanga's mistress picking up the bullets and Bond pursuing, which is also where we meet Mary Goodnight. Now, all of you know my opinion on Mary Goodnight in this film. 
Bonk, bond, bonk, bond, bonk, bond. We're going to dramatically change her character and take a bit of inspiration from the books and also from the amazing actress who was playing her, Britt Eklund. But for the benefit of this point, we're just meeting her as we normally would, where she takes Bond to the hotel where we meet Miss Anders Scaramanga's mistress. Obviously, very famously, this scene is very noticeably said that this does not work about Bond being so aggressive here. It just doesn't fit Roger Moore style. So with that being said, I would probably change the bits to Bond being much more of a charm and using his words and sophistication to get Miss Anders to work for him. Well, at least that's what he thinks she is doing. Anyhow, there's no sort of bottoms up club or anything like that, but they agree that he is going to use her as bait to set a trap for Francisco Scaramanga. The trap is all set up for Miss Anders to deliver bullets to the place in order for Bond to get a shot at Francisco Scaramanga, but it ends up with Bond nearly being killed himself. This sequence is really intended to set up Francisco Scaramanga. Once the trap fails, Bond is on the run out from Scaramanga trying to kill him. Scaramanga is intentionally shooting bullets near him to try and draw him to different places, almost like toying with him and playing with him. It's a really sort of moment where Bond is actually starting to get quite scared about this person, someone he's never really come across before in his career, who's really toying with him. But the scene ends with Goodnight saving Bond and driving him away to safety. From there, we do actually have a scene where Bond does have sex with Goodnight. However, they are both knocked unconscious and kidnapped in the hotel room by Nicknack and some goons of Francisco Scaramanga. The next morning, Bond wakes up in a room dressed in robes and is greeted by Nicknack in the morning who welcomes him to the hotel. Bonjour, Monsieur Bond. I am Nicknack. Monsieur Scaramanga will see you in due course. Miss Goodnight will be kept safely. Bond then discovers he is in Bangkok. At this hotel, Bond explores to see who else is there and notices notable members of the KGB and other respective gangs from, from around the world involved in smuggling operations. Miss Anders is, if you will, almost the entertainer of them all. She's looking after everyone and Bond notices her and goes over to her. They have a discussion about who everyone is while building up the character of Francisco Scaramanga just to know that how dangerous and how scary Bond should be of him. I know this isn't wrong, but I'm slightly taking a bit out of Skyville here, how Silver was so built up throughout the first half of the film, and I feel that treatment should go also to Scaramanga. Following on from this, it's the evening Bond is summoned to a meal with Francisco Scaramanga. Bond eventually meets Francisco Scaramanga. He seems a very charming man who delights Bond in his history, in his circus, and how he went to the KGB, and then, after that, which I'm adding in, from the circus to KGB, Scaramanga used to work for Spectre. I think it's quite nice, the idea that maybe Scaramanga did work for Spectre and then actually left them to pursue his own career. I just think that adds a little bit extra to the mythos of this villain. After the meal, Bond and Scaramanga decide to have, if you will, a clay pigeon shooting contest competition while the banter can ensue between them. Oh. Easier. <laughs> Perhaps you'd call one for me. Of course. Four. Seems terribly difficult. <laughs> No, it isn't, is it? No. In Fleming always had Bond do battle, not just like with gun stuff, but he did it like over a card table. He did it over a game of bridge. He did it over a dining room table at an auction house. And I think the idea of Bond and Scaramanga having a shooting competition together is actually something really cool and quite interesting. This scene ends with him being told that, he, that Scaramanga has plans for Bond and they are coming. However, he has something to attend to first. He wishes Bond goodnight and instructs Nick Zack to send him back to his room. That night, Bond sets his mind to escaping. In the process, Miss Anders comes in begging him to kill Scaramanga, saying that she sent the note that eventually ends with them sleeping together like they did in the film before together hatching a plan to escape. <laughs> 